Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another video for the Unified Minds League Cup at Claremont. It's me, Kahuna Koala, and I'm here again with Curtis. Hello. Curtis and I are going to be doing something very special. We are going to be commentating our own game. It's going to be very awkward. <laughs> so we're going to do things a little bit differently. I'm actually going to comment on what Curtis is playing, and Curtis is going to comment on my plays. So... We know what it's we know what's gonna happen already. It's a spoiler for us, but not gonna spoil it for you. Watch till the end and enjoy. So let's 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 get this let's get this game on the road, right? Cool, so it looks like Curtis is going first. Curtis doesn't know what my card does. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> so let's see what Curtis's card does. Curtis has got a ditto in front, the ditto prism. Can evolve into any stage one. Um, so he's playing a uh, Pokemon communication. Looks like he's eyeing out the Jirachi to come down. Yeah, I'll put back a, a Hooper, which is not useful at all in this matchup. That's that's an understatement. That's, that's quite useless. But <laughs> moving forward. So Kyle is playing the Guardian deck, the Gardevoir Sylveon Tag Team GX deck with the Xerneas and I decided to play the Ability Reshizar deck. Made popular by my man Todd Riklev. So let's see. Bench the Jirachi, attach the skateboard. Classic. So we promote the Jirachi at this point. Jirachi for Stellar Wish. Gets a look at the top five and take a trainer card from his top five and Jirachi's asleep. So we're taking the Wilder. Wilder, as we know, is a staple in any fire deck. So, fun fact, uh, the reason I'm playing a Ditto is because the day of the tournament I couldn't find a third Baltics. <laughs> so just to confuse people, I decided, <laughs> let's play a Ditto. So it looks like Curtis passes and it's over to me. So Curtis? So Kyle draws. Um, Xerneas is definitely not the ideal start for Kyle. Uh, we would have ideally like to start with one of his Gardevoir Sylveons um, to start powering up, to start getting more energies on the field. But nevertheless, he starts with the Xerneas and if I'm not mistaken, he plays a Greens. There we go. So Greens Exploration, you can only play this card if you have, if your Pokemon have no abilities in play. And you may search your deck for two trainer cards, reveal them, put them into your hand and then shuffle your deck afterwards. So green's a very very good card in this uh, deck for Kyle, as none of his Pokemon have abilities. Looks like so. I'm eyeing out the Cherish Ball there. Cherish Ball we'll be seeing a lot in, in, in both of our decks here, um, allowing us to search for any GX Pokemon. So Kyle grabs a Cherish Ball, if I'm not mistaken, I think... Kyle's gonna go, yeah, he's gonna go for another greens to play turn in his second turn. So Kyle benches the God of War Sylveon and then shuffles up. Take take a look at the, the nice sleeve, the, the complementing sleeves here. Oh, totally calculated. <laughs> so Kyle attaches a fairy energy to Xerneas and he's just gonna overrun and put 20 damage on the Heatran, which uh, at the moment isn't rele relevant but does become very relevant as the game goes on. So Curtis uh, draws and benches the Nine Tails on that Ditto, Nine Tails with the Nine Temptations ability. Um, we see him play the Dene, discarding his hand and drawing six, and I know he had a wild in his hand, so couldn't have really had a great hand there. Um, as I was saying, Nine Tails, you get to discard two fire energies, and it's basically a custom catcher. So we see a Stellar Wish. There's only a fire crystal. I almost got to stay, say Stellar Whiff, but I'm sure it'll come. I think it does. <laughs> That, that is the sound of a disappointed man right there. Curtis doesn't look like he has that much. He's got the Wilder in hand with one energy by the looks of things. So he attaches the one energy to the Heatran and draws three cards. We see a Pokecom. 
puts the Hooper back again. Hooper just keeps coming back out just to remind him that not all techs work all the time. I think at this point we were just laughing at the fact that the Hooper always came out. So he takes out another Jirachi. So we thought uh, ideally I would have liked to have played a Volcanion instead of the Hooper, but we didn't have one um, with us before the tournament because uh, I was debating what to play before the start of the tournament so I didn't really have many things set up so the Hooper I thought would be good in certain matchups because I knew there was a lot of Malamar players around so I thought okay let's grab the, grab the Hooper instead and yeah. now you're grabbing a Reshizard from your Cherish Ball Reshizard is what this deck is, is, was about but we've seen a couple of of big names play this deck without any Reshizards at all which was quite a shock to everyone and it appears that it works well even with other Reshizards So we've had an attachment from Wilder, so Curtis technically can still attach for the turn if he manages to get another energy, which he does look like he has in hand. It's an ideal start, I would have loved to have attached energy turn 1, but turn 1 I unfortunately had no energy or to Wilder and uh, no targets to Wilder too. So as you can see I'm debating whether or not to attach to the Heatran or to attach to the Reshizard. Obviously, with, with Heatran's ability, it allows all energies to move to him if he wants to when it becomes active. So, he hasn't got that much to lose attaching it to the Reshizard. Um, I guess it's a part of the thought process. So, Jirachi wakes up and it's over to me. Card draw for turn. Can't think of what he needs to do there. At this point, I can tell you that I looked at Curtis spreading the energies around, so I needed to do something about Heatran's ability. It started to look apparent that, that this is what he was going to do. So Carl plays the greens <coughs> and gets an energy spinner. And a power plant, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. So he uses the energy spinner to get a fairy energy, and then I th yeah, it looks like I'll put the power plant down. So both Pokemon EX and GX have no abilities on both sides of the field, which doesn't affect Kyle that much. Jokes on Curtis, I have no abilities. <laughs> so Kyle overruns again and puts another 40 onto the heat train, which now brings it in range of a Collider Storm knockout. So we see a Stellar Wish here by Curtis. Uh, is he going to be going for the Pokecom? Pulp Pad maybe? He did discard a Wilder earlier and he did play another one. So there are two Wilders there. Looks like he eyes out the Pulp Pad which allows him to shuffle two supporters from his discard pile back into his deck again. I think it's quite key in, in this build, Curtis. I think you only played Wilders, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there was no other supporters, just the Wilders. So, yeah. Pulp Pad is so important in this matchup. Yeah. You see the skateboard being attached to the Jirachi. And the other Jirachi going up for his turn to Stalowish. So, we see another Stalowish. Curtis adjusting that giant half like he's already decided. Yeah. Yep. This has to be that. There's the giant horse. So it allows Heatran to be able to come up if he's got a switch in hand, which I think I did see there. So now I'm just debating whether or not I want to search for the giant hearth. Yep. So first and then this so giant hearth allows you to discard a card and search your deck for two fire energy cards and put them into your hand. Works well with nine tails and wilder. It's just it's so well rounded for fire decks. So they are playing the Pulp Pad for the two Wilders <coughs> to shuffle those back in as those are the only ways to draw cards without the use of the DNA and to power up Pokemon very very quickly. Showing quite to some hand signals there. Nice a thorough shuffle 
by Curtis. Looks like he's eyeing out those nine temptations. And he pulls up the Guardian. Not a bad choice with Fire Crystal in hand to get them back anyway. You can still attach for turn here. So I don't know why I'm debating where I attach because it doesn't actually matter. We see the Heatran come up and it allows Heatran's ability. So I really oh. retreated and Kyle stopped me from repeating again, but I realized I had a switch. <laughs> well was, spotted, Kyle. I was just uh, a bit too eager. Kyle is such a vigilant player. He yeah. is so vigilant. <laughs> So, using that ability for Heatran, it, it brings up, well, with the Burning Road, it's allowed to move any fire energies on the board to him. Once he becomes active. Once he becomes active. And so, yeah, I, if I'm not mistaken, I use the Steaming Stomp attack, just to start putting some damage onto the um, God of Sylveons. I know that the... God of War Sylveon deck does play a lot of healing, so I'm just trying to get as much damage out as possible. If I can keep at least 30 damage on the God of War Sylveon, I can knock it out with the Reshizard's um, Flare Strike attack. So my goal is just to try and get as much damage on the field as possible and try and outspeed the healing that Kyle has in the deck. So Kyle draws for turn and he's played a Coach Trainer for 4. So you may draw two cards and if you active Pokemon's attack game you may draw two more cards. Very very good card in this matchup where Kyle doesn't actually want to get rid of cards in his hand. He wants to keep as many cards in his hand as possible. Kyle just realizing now that he does knock out the Heatran if he can get all the energies onto the card of Sylveon. I'm just thinking about how much he needs to heal. So there we see he uses two Grave Potions, which leaves the God of Arsenal beyond on 30 damage still. So he attaches a Fairy Energy to the active. Plays a Giant Hearth to look for zero Fire Energy. <laughs> I, did, I didn't even make that look like I searched for anything. <laughs> I think Kyle just get, getting rid of some of the cards that don't really play any role in this matchup. So I can say from my perspective that the reason why I did that and only to find out later that there were no reset stamps anyway but to burn some of those useless cards so that if in the case I do get reset stamped that there's no chance of me drawing those cards again. Okay, so Kyle switches into the Xerneas again. Bench is another Sylveon Gardevoir and overruns again. Zunia is really putting the work in on this matchup. Curtis draws, does not look like he's got a lot there. So we see tossing away a fire crystal for the giant art. Things have gotten very serious in this matchup. Yeah. He might be looking to. Uh, nine Temptations out the God of Sylveon with no energies on it. Try and buy himself some time to, to get back in the game. So exactly that. Targets down the Guardian with no energies. Attach your energy to the Bench Reshizard and we see that's Burning Stomp for 130. Yeah. So not much going the way of my side. Just literally attach and pass and attack. Attack is very important. Yeah. I mean, you just explained half of the moves that you do in a Pokemon turn. <laughs> attach, draw, attack. <laughs> so Kyle now sitting with a God of War with 130 damage on it. Plays a Greens. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the turn where you get the... the, the Fidget Spinner, I call it the Fidget Spinner, the Energy Spinner. <laughs> fidget Spinner, a, I like Fidget Spinner. And a Tag Switch. I think it's a Tag Switch, I think you're right. Because I think you need to start doing some damage. And also not wanting to keep the energies on, on the damaged one. Yeah. So instead of going for a Fidget Spinner and a Switch, rather go for the Tag Switch and get to move those energies back again. 
So tag switch for those who don't know, it's like an energy switch, but you can move two energies from one of your tag team Pokemon to another Pokemon. So there we see Kyle getting ready for the knockout. <coughs> Using Collider Storm. Collider Storm does 150 and you may move any number of energy from some from one of your Pokemon to another one of your Pokemon anywhere you like. And that's a nice two prizes for Kyle. So, I top deck the Pokemon communication and I'm very happy about that. Sitting with a big teeny prism star in my hand, that's not the greatest in that matchup. Oh, not the greatest hand, to be fair. Just that one card. So, Curtis has got the Den GX here. He's got Stellar Wish, he's got Giant Earth. So, he really just needs to try and get as much out of this turn as possible to get that Reshizard into the active and start hitting for damage. If he can get a Wilder with three energies, we're looking at a knockout on, on the God of Osorio. We just adjust the table there quickly. <laughs> and oh, look, I drew into that Victini Prism Star again. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I have enough for the knockout this turn. Um, Ideally, I know I would like to knock out the God of War Sylveon with the two energies on it. So if I can get up to five fire energies, then I should be able to. But we'll see what happens. We see a switch, we see a Pokecom. I think I saw a fire crystal there. Yeah. So yeah, the reasoning behind grabbing the switch is that I'm getting greedy and I want to sell a wish one more time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honesty, hey? Honesty. It's always easier to watch the matches back and then realize <laughs> what you could have and should have done. So we welder the two onto the Reshizard. Draw a nice clean three. Wilder, Wilder, and that Hooper comes back again. <laughs> Refusing to stay away. We see uh, another Pulp Pad. Yeah, so I decided to play two Pulp Pads um, just to get as much use of, as possible of, of the three Wilders. Uh, attaching two energies and drawing three cards is a very, very powerful um, mechanic. And the best way to maximize the odds of doing that is just to keep having them in your deck. So we see the manual attaching for turn, so he's got his four. He's going to retreat out of the active Jirachi and it looks like we're going to be seeing a KO on this Guardian with Flare Strike. Flare Strike doing 230 damage and he cannot use Flare Strike next turn. Another reason for possibly grabbing the switch is so that I can switch out of the Reshazard and into the Jirachi to use Flare Strike again on the following turn. I'm just trying to cover my bases as much as possible to make sure that I'm able to attack for the maximum amount of damage. So Kyle promotes his Sylveon, his God of War Sylveon with the 30 damage and then plays the reset stem. Reset stem coming in very clutch here because if Curtis manages to get another wild at this point, we're looking at 300 damage because of the giant heart that's in play. So we, uh, the damage is, is way more than enough to take the KO and win the game. So I've got to try and stop this from happening. So a balls analysis. Look at the top seven and get to take two trainer cards. It's kind of like a Jirachi in a way. It's two extra cards. And you get to grab two cards. But it's your support of the yeah. turn. Ball, totally overrated. <laughs> Wondrous Labyrinth it could be a very good play at this point, stopping you from getting those six energies that you require in a Poke Gear. Wondrous Labyrinth Prism, obviously, it's, uh, it allows you to all non fairy Pokemon require one extra energy to use their attacks. So, meaning that Reshizard's double plays would then need seven energies to do the 300 damage. Yeah. So Kyle puts Wondrous Labyrinth down, 
and does the 150 and decides to keep the energies on the active God of War Sylveon. So now we're going to get into a very wild turn. <laughs> so we see the draw. And that reset stamp looks like it hurts. We see a Wilder though. A Wilder, a Heat Factory, a Vulpix and a Blacephalon. Oh, but no energies. So very crucial to get rid of that giant heart when I did. So we see a retreat by the Reshizard. The madness. Yeah. So we see a Stella Wish. Perhaps hoping to get another giant heart. Or a, a fire crystal, perhaps. And yeah, I think we're talking about why, why retreat. Oh, and there's the fire crystal. I think we were talking about the fact how insane it was that you did retreat. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I think we we're just talking about how I wanted to just end the game then and there. Because <laughs> the outrage wouldn't have finished the game for me and I think you possibly would have knocked me out the next turn. Leaving the energies on the God of War kind of showed my intentions already. Yeah. But then me not realizing that you had four prizes left also made a big... A very big difference. Big I think difference, that's, yeah. yeah. I think spreading energies around a little bit instead of committing all of them could have came, came in clutch for a late heat and play perhaps. Yeah. Even Bikini Prison start play. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think you only played the one heat ran in your deck list. One heat ran, um, one heat ran GX, and then there's a Turtonator and a Blacephala. Normal Turtonator and Blacephala. And the Victimi. The yeah. Victimi Prism is, is quite a good attack in this ability zone, with Nine Tails discarding so many energies. And it's the pass. No nine temptations. And all you need now is to custom knock catcher. out the Reshizard. Well, we need to get a custom catcher before yeah. we. So there is a power plant. Stops any uh, the Dene shenanigans uh, in Curtis's next turn. You see a Cherish Ball. Mm, there's an interesting tech there. I was the going to say, did, deck. did you see that Chip Chip Isaac there? <laughs> what is this madness? I think, awkwardly enough, I put that Chip Chip Isaac in my deck for the turn after I use Magical Miracle GX. Yeah. And I can be honest with you, I think in this whole League Cup, I did not hit one Magical Miracle the whole day. So. <laughs> Although, although I feel like Chip Chip Ice Axe helped here and there where, where I could dictate what people draw into. Especially after a game swimming turn. So we see a Poke again. If Kyle hits the greens here, I'm in a bit of trouble. Okay, it's the coach trainer. Oh, I see a reset stamp there. Shuffle, shuffle, and let's see. Looks like Coach Trainer is what it's just gonna have to be the player, unfortunately. Although we would like to. <laughs> so, Carl does have a custom catcher in hand, he just needs to draw one, and uh, he did some <laughs> wild gestures there <laughs> to try and uh, get the luck on his side, and it paid off. <laughs> Doing some some quick maths. So custom catcher pulling up the Reshizard. So for those who haven't seen it yet, custom catcher, if you play two from your hand at the same time, you can cast one of the Pokemon into the active. If you play one, you can draw till you have three. So we see the chip chip ice axe coming down here. Allowing me to <laughs> <laughs> you get so excited by the one card that you leave it on top. <laughs> don't even bother looking at the others. I really uh, I hope to see what that card is. I can't remember. But uh, really just trying to control the next turn. Knowing my luck, it's the Hooper. <laughs> <laughs> it 
taking one loss to get the discard pile. Playing another Guardian. And we see Kaleidostorm for the knockout. I do realize at this point that I've got quite a lot of fire energy in the discard pile. So if you team, you could come in quite clutch. I gave you an ideal. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Just looking for a card that's useless. There's the Victimi. Speaking of the Victimi, I, I, I start counting those fire images immediately because I know that the press is on. Curtis is just weighing out the options here. I know I need to do 200. I need to do 230. That's it. And the Victini can actually get to 230, but I have no way of getting the Victini out of the deck. If I'm mistaken. Hoping, well, you can't Wilder either because then you're wasting your Wilder for the turn. Hmm. You could uh, retreat with the Jirachi and try another Stellar Wish, I suppose. I, guess I think that's... I do do that because I think I have. <laughs> do do. <laughs> See a Blacephalon in hand, there's a Heat Factory, you could try and draw into it a little bit. I think I do try that. I go try and exhaust all options. There's the switch. So now Heat Factory draw into the Victini. You see the Victini again. That Victini is just peeking out at you. I know I need to get... I think all the energies I have are in my hand. So somehow I need to get rid of all those energies. And... Wilder. And put the Heat Factory down. So I know there's a way that I can get rid of most of those. But I somehow need to get the <laughs> big TV before I can do any of that. So I think I grabbed the heat factory here. Yeah. I'm actually reading the third night and the Blacephalon <laughs> to see which one is more appropriate. <laughs> and I realize the Blacephalon I need too much energy in my hand. And the third night I need too much energy on the field to actually do the 250. So those options are out. Looking at that face set fire energy. <laughs> Do I get the heart or do I get the, the switch. switch? I think the switch is appropriate because you 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 got to play that heat factory now. Yeah. So at least I do know that I can get rid of two of the fire energies using the nine tails, but that's not gonna help. So I end up not playing the heat factory and just going for the blacephala. You do play the heat factory. Mm. And we see you discard a fire energy and draw three cards. So there's the oh, you would have got the Victini had you played it first. But I'm not short one fire energy because I, I remember I played fourteen. So two on the Victini and twelve is two forty, and then there's one in the yeah. So we see the scoop. Uh, Curtis rather trying to get into game two. It, it just makes more sense at this point. So I take the first game. So the big misplay there was probably not outraging on the turn that I had the damage on the Reshizar. Um, thinking that I only had, that Carl only had three prizes left when he actually had four. But we live and we learn. So we move on to game two. Carl and I both tested and practiced before the tournament together. So we knew exactly what each other was. Well, we decided on the morning <laughs> what we were gonna play, what we, were gonna but play, we knew yes. exactly what we what our options were and stuff. So for us, it was more of a fun game. I had all the cards for this Guardian deck, and uh, if I didn't play it, Curtis was looking to play it, and I decided at one o'clock in the morning, I decided that I want to play it. I played like a couple of games online to try and get a feel for it, and watched a few YouTube videos on some of the other popular YouTubers that have been playing the deck. Um, just to get a feel as to how the deck runs and maybe find one or two redundant cards which is really little to none like strangely enough every card in that deck really does have a place um with very little moving pieces i mean the late night youtube videos also guided him to the chip chip ice axe <laughs> i uh the, it was playing online i realized how good that chip chip ice axe was if you could if your opponent draws dead after the first GX, 
and then you and then you chip chip ice axe on the next turn you lock them out of two turns maybe three turns and it becomes disastrous at that point in the game because you're hitting at a constant 150 at that point since you have the energies to attack so you can try and close the show so yeah i start dishes out and i double change four and i only grab the lady grand classic <laughs> So I know time is not on my side here. So we should see Curtis uh, dropping a gear and putting some pace on this gear. So the hand doesn't, my hand doesn't look too bad. I do know that I wish I could have had another um, sort of energy. So I think there's a welder. No, it's a fire crystal. So we did a change for six. And we draw into a wilder. So that Rizizard looks mean already and we are talking about turn one. So on my side of the table I'm like no I thought I had this win in the bag. <laughs> I just gotta hang in here. So I have cherished ball for the DNA and pass my turn, keeping the DNA in my hand. And uh, basically say to Kyle, your move. Yeah, move. <laughs> so we see Pocky Gear having a look. I know there's no way Kyle can attack me on turn one um, and do damage. So for me, having all the cards up and stuff is not really a big risk at all. So Kyle greens, much like he did in the first game. And uh, let's see what he grabs. Looks like a power plant stopping that the Dene I saw in the hand. And the choice helmet? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this power plant does hurt. Yeah, that hand doesn't look too great, although you've got a Wilder though. Mm -hmm. So you can have the power plant <laughs> and the greens. Because <laughs> uh, apparently. Green says you have to draw another green <laughs> when you play it. <laughs> and then, yeah, we just see a fairy song to get some energies on the board quickly. So, pressure is on here. Yeah. So, I was definitely looking for the 300 damage turn one. Doesn't, or turn look, two. doesn't look like that's going to be coming about though. So, I think I do welder the one fire energy just to draw some more cards and hopefully get rid of the power plant. Um, so that I can detain it later. I'm very happy to see that one fire energy. <laughs> and look, I go into two fire energy. <laughs> and a Jirachi. Nice. So I think I do have the escape board in my hand. You do, and the and switch. A switch. Hmm. So we see the switch into the Jirachi for the Stellar Wish. And Kyle's saying, Why did you switch into the Jirachi? You should just attack him. And I was like, Put the escape board down immediately just to show him. <laughs> and here we see the giant heart. So the the Nene coming into back into play. For people I can tell you right now at this moment I'm not happy. After seeing this crazy start, I'm really not happy about what I'm seeing here. So we see the giant heart being used. I do remember thinking during this game that I need to get a Vulpix down at some point, but I, looking back, I don't think I actually do even get a Vulpix down. So the only thing that gets the the only thing that gets you to search for the Vulpix is the Pokecoms in this yeah. in this matchup. So we see a Cherish Ball. I see the Pokecoms. And looking at that amazing shuffling. I decided just to burn that cherish ball because I know Kyle plays Luigi and Stan. So I'm just trying to thin my deck and not draw into dead cards. Like electric fairy charms. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a choice here. I could attach to the Reshizard and then retreat into the heat and take the knockout. Or or just hit with the flare strike. Hit with the flare strike. I decided to go with the flare strike. 
for 230 damage. So now Kyle's on a bit of a clock because he needs to sort of try and deal with this issues on somehow. See, I got the greens immediately. Kyle not too sure what exactly he has and needs. Kyle not too sure what to do in this, <laughs> in this situation. Well, obviously hindsight being 2020, I think uh, a potential play for me should have been to... Uh, a good play would have been to, to bring up the, the heat drain with double custom catcher. Huh. Stopping the heat drain's ability and kind of locking it out a little bit if Kurt is going to get a switch. But like I said, hindsight 2020. Yeah. So Kyle's still deciding what exactly he wants to grab. He's put the Wondrous Labyrinth on top to try and make me attach more energy, but then he's also debating whether or not to do it because a Wilder and attachment equals that magical seven numbers that magical 7 to allow me to double blast anyway so Kyle's thinking do I go for it or do I grab something else and he decides to grab the wondrous labyrinth and attack switch not a good move Kyle <laughs> not a good move I think at that point I was just trying to get rid of the giant heart yeah um, but wondrous labyrinth As we did notice in my hands that I have do have three fire energy just <laughs> waiting. <laughs> no, let me just let me just get out my X-ray glasses to be clear. <laughs> Kyle trying to do some mask to just see how much damage he needs to get rid of on that. Well to get rid of and out. still survive, you know? So there's 130 there now, which kind of forces Curtis to do the GX attack now. And because by the looks of things, it doesn't look like I'm going to be doing damage, or will I? I am. Kyle, what are you doing? <laughs> You're giving so him my heart rate. Ah! <laughs> 150 damage onto the Reshizad. Moves all the energy onto his benched God of War Sylvia. So we see the attachment. See the Denene. Drawing a fresh six, and what do we see? We see a Pulp Pad, Pokecom, Fire Crystal, there's a Turtonator there as well. I actually can't remember what I did here. <laughs> I know what you do, you realize that the Dene was a bad play. <laughs> yeah. What a waste! I got the Blacephalon. I think I think you should take the Hooper at this point. Nah, I think Ooh. I should tear it up. <laughs> Hooper is super, super glad. So for those of you who don't know, Hooper will do an um, amazing 10. Which, with resistance to dark, does a fat zero. <laughs> so I'm just looking and seeing what I need to grab. And I think I grabbed the... He grabs the Hooper. To throw it away, I think. <laughs> Maybe a giant half player. You see the pulpit, and we see the Pokemon back. Oh, he's trying to thin his hand a bit. <laughs> I was probably thinking, like, what is this guy doing? Why did he take a Hooper? And I got shucks. <laughs> and I do grab the Terminator. See you retreat again. Wild place. <laughs> Curtis is playing a really wild <laughs> This is the second time he's retreated a Rishi's art. Insane. But this works. Uh, it works, but in retrospect, if you didn't get a if you didn't get a supporter, I mean if you didn't get a stadium, mm. 
you would have to rely on Wilder and two energies to get you out of this. So that that was that was super ballsy, and you need a switch. Yep, but knowing the counts, I know I do play four switch. I play three sta four stadiums. You see the attachment to the heat ran. So all in all, this is a very good play. It's it's taking me out of a two prize game and forcing to attack with the GX, the baby GX. The pass, because I committed all the energies to the bench, so I think the, the the threat is a lot less. Let's just get that giant heart out of here <laughs> and go straight into ball. Hoping to get a switch out of the size here. I see some fairy charms there, which I can only imagine I was not happy about at all. So grab the coach trainer and the, the tag, tag switch. switch. I think you just... If I have an energy in hand, I'll be able to still attack this turn. Yeah, I think this is where you just shout at Manjirachi and send it to the... To the afterlife. <laughs> to, the, to the graveyard. <laughs> Okay, so, so you have the switch. I've got switch. Switch is not the best player right now. I know what I was trying to do here. I remember. I had, I think I have the Xerneas in hand, and I needed an energy in hand to be able to yes. switch, attach, and do the. Uh, is it Sanctuary GX to yeah. move all of the damage over to the Jirachi and freshening myself up, but. For no, but I just can't. I can't get there. I move all the energies back. That's uh, a, a questionable call, but uh, not too bad. I must have had. A, I've got the tag switch in hand, obviously. So going down to five prizes on game two. So yeah, I'm deciding who to promote as my active. Just looking at my hand and. You would think Jirachi would be the obvious play, but unfortunately, that hand does not look great at all. We see the Pokecom eyeing out at the Dene. But there is a power plant in play. I think he got the Giant Art in hand. Yeah, though. Giant Art in hand with two fire energies. Brilliant. Classic. Classic Giant Art plays. You can get that stadium out of here. Just to. Uh, to reiterate, I played four power plants, <laughs> four power plants and a wondrous labyrinth to almost always make sure that I win the stadium war. So discarding three energies off the Dene, three the Dene's on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <well no. laughs> and the Hooper comes back, classic Hooper. I think I threw the Hooper away now with the giant bar. <laughs> Hoopa could have been any one of my other attackers and it would have been much better. At this point your bench is full though. So we could be looking at a Wilder to Heatran hitting for 300. I think, I think that's exactly what we do. Which makes me cry. <laughs> because I've then got a damaged Guardian on the bench with very little art. So I'm just making sure my energy counts as well, um, seeing how much I have left. Touching two of the Wilder, got the switch in hand, you didn't draw your three cards though. I think you tell me now and then I do draw them. Is Carl the All Vigilant going to tell you? Yes, yes. What a, what a good player, you know, <laughs> reminding his opponent to draw cards. We see the GX. Just disrespectfully turning that GX marker over. Turning it over with authority. The hot burn GX. Knocking the Guardian out for 300. Taking Curtis down to three prizes in game two. You see a coach trainer, it's a real Hail Mary at this point. Because at this at this stage I'm hoping. Oh, it's just so fairy charm. I'm hoping to get some heal out of this. I have about 10, 12 cards in my hand there. 
and I'm telling Curtis, I have nothing. Absolutely nothing. I GX a 200 and take out the the Hedron. That's that's all I can hope. I can hope that Curtis doesn't have any energies in his hand, but as we can see on stream, he has energies. You see a Stella Wish. And I have one Wilder left. It's a Stella Whiff at last. Stella Whiff taking nothing off of the Jirachi. We see a giant heart. And there's the one Wilder. <laughs> so I'm really trying my best to get into this one Wilder. I think for for some good sportsmanship. I think Curtis um, he's gonna he's gonna reveal off the top of his deck to see if he's got the wild or not for game. If not, I've got game in hand. I do tell him this that I do have the two custom catches in hand. So off this heat factory, he needs to draw a wilder. He's got a fire crystal in hand, so he can he can definitely burn it. There's the skateboard. So I put the heat factory down and try to discard the giant art into Kyle's discard pile. <laughs> and Kyle just quickly moves it over. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. The only thing it helps me with is getting rid of fairy charms. So we see the giant, the heat factory one, two, there's the wilder. And I bang the table because <laughs> no, it looks like Curtis wins using outrage and there's 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 so little time left uh so i priced two switches and a welder <laughs> which is uh brilliant <laughs> so it's one one all for the for the round and at this stage we we kind of both know what's coming here we know that it's probably going to end up in a draw unless something crazy happens yeah. like curtis starting with a hooper and nothing else <laughs> Or me starting with the Charizard and going Kyle not getting another basic out and doing 300, but we decide to play it out and see what happens. Message to the Pokemon trading company. Make matte Professor sleeves. <laughs> Would make us all happy if the sleeves were just matte. Curtis really just shuffling away there and I'm probably like why are we even shuffling at this point I think my record was 2 and 0 oh. and, yeah. oh, and yours was uh, 1 a win and a draw win and a draw 101 so obviously third round in the league cup coming in on a win and a draw I definitely don't want another, another draw, draw yeah. I'm just putting myself in tough situations, trying to avoid bubble matching. So we can see that my hand is not great at all. But I do have the cherish ball, so I am able to get the Divinic if I need. And then I also get two mulligans. So far. Mm. So Kyle playing only five Pokemon uh, generally does uh, mulligan quite a bit. Strangely enough, not too much on Saturday, but online I've given away a lot of cards. <laughs> and here we go. Let's get the show on the road. If I'm not mistaken, Kyle's tarts. Just to go first. You see the card here? Oh no! Game three. Hmm. I do go first. I have no idea why I'm going first. I should be going second. I think we all uh, get to suffer a little bit from that League Cup pressure. Yeah. And at this point, I'm just very upset because I've I've burned through stuff that I shouldn't have. Kyle making sure that I can't do uh, a lot of damage by getting the Choice Helmet. I remember you debating going first or second and you're just like, well, it doesn't matter. I'll just go first. <laughs> The power plant hurts a lot. <laughs> Cause you like, I remember this. I remember the small celebration. So we see the tag switch. 
we get the second greens because we play greens on first turn, we fetch greens. Yeah. It just seems like the right thing to do. Okay, I'm shuffling up and passing. And I'm getting upset because I can't play further than it down. I grab one anyway. Just to show me I've got it. Yeah. And you better have an answer for it. Serious is odd. You see the Pokecom. <laughs> Put it in an AOA. <laughs> the Vulpix, uh, you drew the nine tails at the top. And it looks like we're calling it. So, ended up with a draw. The first games went a little bit too long. But it's to be expected with kind of matchup. But overall, I think it was an amazing match. Um, Ability Zard coming into the tournament telling Curtis up front that Ability Zard is actually probably one of my toughest matchups yeah. that I could face. So I wasn't expecting much but managed to pull the draw and yeah I think that uh, was a good showcase for both of the decks. In hindsight I think uh, playing some reset stamps would have been a good call from my side but you know it can't be too upset placing the top four so no of course well thank you guys for watching if you like what you saw as always please pop a like subscribe to see the rest of the videos for the unified minds league cup series thank you and cheers <laughs>